Ronan and Gary, good morning to you. Guys, good morning. How are you keeping? You're in, you're in form anyway. What, you're have, have we talked to you before about who who you, as, if you have a soccer team that you support? Of course, um, Liverpool. Liverpool. I'm yeah. even asked. <laughs> you mentioned this in your uh, examiner so column. You're, you're delighted at, um, at United's resurgence. Um... Yeah, it's interesting, isn't he? Obviously, because it's grown up in Cork. That was the Liverpool Man United. You supported one or the two. Obviously, there was a few outliers that supported Everton or, as Paul O'Connell does, or uh, someone like that. Uh, but, yeah, of course, the Premiership is was huge in my uh, generation. Huge. We talk a lot about like getting the best out of players. Are you watching what Ten Hag is doing there at the minute? Like in the, we were just talking about like United. Um, Colin was saying United are the best they've been since Fergie was there, and he seems to be getting out, getting much better out of players who were looking a little bit average before he arrived. Do you watch stuff like that and pay yeah, attention? Yeah, I was to watching it, it too. I, I think also it was it was quite evident, even though it felt like the old Old Trafford last night, even before a ball was kicked. There was a, a kind of an eerie anticipation, silence. Um, let's let's get into these guys. Watching Man United probably up to last night, you felt that it was a little bit off. It was I was probably more taken by your uh, confidence conversation um, because that for me is 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 the key to everything in 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 sport uh, and the fact that. Uh, when it rolls and when it's easy and then you feel like you're doing the, exactly the same thing in a game it can be narrowed even down to the, the, the technical side of goal kicking but even in, a, in the a player's flow of a game without any of those I suppose set piece skills when you have confidence how easy the game is you don't even you're just kind of going autopilot and you play but if you have that in soccer's term for 11 or in football for 15 or, or sorry in rugby for 15 um it becomes so interesting because you're not in confidence all your career. That is, I suppose, the big difference for how the public perceive the robotic performances as opposed to the emotions and carrying a niggle or out of form of a, of a, of a sportsman. Have you seen an example like Jaden Sancho yourself where teammates around him are flourishing, but he's not, even though he has a technical ability? Have you seen like a former teammate or even one of your own players now go through something like that? Yeah, I do. You know what I mean, and he because he's a, a a big player for me, and because he's a good guy, and I like him a lot. Greg Aldred is probably in that situation at the minute, and the fact that he didn't uh, rip it up because of the standard he's created against Italy, he gets taken off after fifty minutes in Ireland. Um, you know, Caelan Doris was the guy who stole the show. The opposite number of Caelan Doris is Greg Aldred. Greg Aldred is a is a fantastic rugby player, but at the minute he's doing it tough. But I know it'll come good if he kind of stays true to what he believes in, if he keeps up his his uh, work rate uh, on the ball, off the ball, but also has a, um, pro- a good kind of lifestyle off the pitch. You, you can never be uh, I mean, 9 out of 10 every game. I think what the great players do is that they're, when on bad days, they have, you know what I mean, they hit a 5 or a 6, while early on it was evident when I was trying to... I suppose, understand the mental side of the game. I could have a nine, but then the next week you can have a two. But not alone does it break you, but it also breaks your forwards because if they have a kicker, we'll say in rugby's term, on the pitch where, you know I mean, they've given everything to win a scrum penalty, they're shattered, then, OK, the captain points at the posts, uh, upsets Raj, and you miss it. It, it, it. Not alone does it eat away at you, but it also eats at them mm-hmm. subconsciously when that call comes for we need a scrum penalty, are they really at 100% because do they fully believe that you're going to kick it over the bar? So, you know, I think that's, if you can get a handle on that, you'd be you'd be the next genius coach. Yeah. Have you been in a situation where you're standing over the ball, it's a penalty, 75th minute, and all you're thinking is about, I don't want to leave my teammates down, rather than the technique of the kick itself? Yeah, of course, but that's the that's the that's a stage one of development of, of I suppose getting on the kicking ladder in the fact that, as you know from previous conversations, probably in the seventy eight minute, I was hoping that this decisive penalty wouldn't be ordered uh, ordered to you because <laughs> you're you're trying to escape and, and not putting that. But then it's a learning process. Then at the end of your career, 
or when you're feeling good, you just you you crave that moment and you crave close games and you're kind of pissed off if it's or if you're in a runaway lead, you know, because oh no, well I'm not going to be really put uh, in a clutch position here, and that's I suppose the sickness of the be- or the beauty of the mind, depending how you look upon it. There's an obvious segue here, so I'm going to take it into Ross Byrne this weekend and like the journey that he's been on running over the last like couple of years. Some interesting stuff from during the media uh, from the media bits during the week, where he was asked about like the improvements in his game, and he was kind of like, "Well, the, my game hasn't actually improved that much. It's more like what you've been saying about me has not been that accurate, and now it's, that's all coming to bear." But equally, like the confidence of that he must be getting, that must be flowing through him at the minute from seemingly been the number two and you know the man to take over after Sexton um, and hitting his timing right that must be like that must be the confidence surging through him at the minute must be massive it is exactly but I think there's probably another chapter I I, I don't think he's um, he's anywhere near his optimum level in the fact that I, I think I'd love to actually hear what he really has to say because mm. I'd say he's hurting a lot he, he's been uh, pilified in 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 Irish sport, never mind Irish rugby, and the fact that how how was this guy kind of even number two in Leinster was some of the chat if I if I was to recall it accurately, and he was uh, uh, bashed, but he is um, that's why you know people always in the environment are the best people to judge because uh, I mean the day you see whatever minimum a hundred minutes of him every day, be it in. Um, a kind of a technical session or in an actual rugby session so you have a fair idea so but I don't have the data at the hand but his uh, contribution to Leinster has been quite staggering in the fact I suppose how many big games he's played and how many big moments he's had and then um, there was probably um, only in the last well 10 Irish games like people are very too quick to forget that they like uh the start of the Andy Farrell era, there was people kind of going, oh, this isn't working. Yeah. Mm. We'll take a pause and I'll repeat that. There was people, plenty of them going, uh, no, there could be a call for change here, you know? So yeah. now all of a sudden it's gone completely uh, the opposite of that and the perception is probably uh, over uh if that is, even is a word, I don't think so, over-exaggerated uh, potentially, is that what I'm looking for? Mm. And... Um, uh, in the middle of all that has been the role of um, of Ross Byrne. Well, um, anyone knows that you you know, playing number ten, you need huge amounts of resilience, and and thankfully he has that because I would say there was many moments where he was nearly broken. But uh, you know, what I hope he will show on Saturday will be the fact that um, you mean that there's life after Johnny, and I can take this team, and we can get to where we want to with this team, and I think he's earned that at at uh, club level with Leinster but because of his it's his first start in the Six Nations I think after breaking on six years ago um, so he just he needs uh, he needs that opportunity and Saturday will be an opportunity because it'll be a tougher game than people think I, I, I feel anyway Is it a positive or a negative that he's playing alongside in the halfback partnership someone as inexperienced equally inexperienced at Six Nations level as Craig Casey? I think too much is um, at times, um, Colm, too much is uh, emphasised or, or stressed on partnerships. It's about getting your role right. Yeah, you need your nine and you need to be humming with them, but like what we will be established in the relationship already during the week will be you have a fair idea of what his strong points are, how he likes to play the game, and then you probably, from a tens point of view, is that well, similar enough to play me with, um, you know, Peter Stringer, you knew you'd have the ball a lot. You're going to get the ball a lot, OK? But then uh, someone like maybe uh, Tomas, uh, he'd be a bit of a hog ball at times because he'd, he'd, if it was nice, he, he'd uh, take it on, have a cut himself. And then if he didn't like it, he'd lash it out to you. Here, do something with that, Raj. <laughs> <laughs> A hog so, ball is a new one on me. It's a character. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. He's hogging the ball, that fella. Get it away from him. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, we're, we're on national radio. My apologies. <laughs> you have um, like a uh, somewhat unique experience in that, like obviously you got to see Ross Byrne yeah. up close for whatever it was, 20 minutes or so um, in uh, Marseille last year. Now, maybe unusual 
experience in that, like Leinster were backtracking uh, due to your own uh, strangling of the game for, for maybe much of that and you don't get the proper view that you might like. But I was interested, Andy Farrell, Farrell talking during the week, he was talking about like he's earned burn, earned the right to start, earned the right to run the team. Like that's the nub of it, isn't it? Like because we're not looking anymore for somebody to just come in and be like a half Johnny Sexton. We're looking for somebody to come in and, and stamp their personality on proceedings. Yeah, and you need that too because, like, the reality is going into knockout rugby when you're playing brutal games. If you want to win a World Cup, you 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 need to be three deep. That that is exactly it. So you know, Johnny is obviously the key man, but then is it? I think it's most definitely um, Ross Byrne, who has probably created a, a, a unique role for himself in the fact in Test rugby. I think his game management, his line kicking, and his goal kicking are are world class. So, like, that's very, very important when you come to Cup Rugby. I think people misunderestimate Autumn Internationals for Cup Rugby. So, when you get to a World Cup, it's Cup Rugby at a certain stage because it's obviously knockout. So, the mentality becomes different. So, um, how you, I suppose, um, create or select your best 10 backs uh, or is it nine backs sometimes, potentially, and if you go 6-2 in your best mm. 23 uh I mean, Ross Byrne is an invaluable um, uh, asset. But also the fact, I think, we we also have to recognise he has made uh, one key improvement in his game and that he's he's got much better at picking the right pass but also playing flash. I think as, as a 10, yeah. you need to be able to take on the line. If you're just distributor, 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 it's easier to push off him. But... Uh, he has changed that with his alignment, uh, with obviously uh, him probably having a look at his video analysis, but also with a good bit of good coaching. And uh, like, I think uh, he's pr- it's probably underappreciated his 30 minutes against France. That game was still in the balance. You yeah. have to remember that at 26 19, wasn't it? it was, it's still a one score game. Yeah, uh, and, minutes, like, yeah. you have. Uh, Obviously, from playing, I know well that if France, the away team, scored at 26-26, mentally it feels like if you're in green, you're behind because the momentum shifts to the away team. And I suppose with the amount of French people that were in the ground that day, that that's uh, that's an equation that he has to play out in his head to make sure he keeps the scoreboard ticking. Is Byrne in a difficult position here, Ronan, ahead of tomorrow? Because all expectations is a fairly comprehensive victory over Italy. So what can he do to stand out as this is genuinely impressive? Because maybe, like, is it something to do with the control of the game I, rather than his kicking? I would think the biggest error he would make would be looking to stand out. Well, I think what's he, why he's appreciated and why he's trusted is he gets his job done. What does getting his job done, like managing his team around the pitch? I mean, if he tries to play, uh, for example, a game where, and I was in that category as well, where you may look to play, for example, like um, uh, Felipe Contepomi could play, uh, maybe he's not the best example, but Felipe Contepomi was a top class 10 that could play brilliant, I suppose, cup rugby, but he was maybe suited fantastically to the barbarian style of rugby. While I am not suited to the barbarian style of rugby, Ross Byrne is more uh, a strategist as opposed to a flair player. If he tries to um, you mean rip up the line five times, which we probably haven't seen in any game at any level, for me that would be trying to appease the perception as opposed to uh, drilling home and nailing his strong points. But yeah, like, would he be in danger of uh, thinking, well, if I just do my job, I'm back out next time because it won't be enough. I'll really have back to stand out, out here. Back out in, in uh, place of who? Uh, well, obviously Sexton, but even in the future after Sexton, if I need to stand out for the rest of my competition, who's going to be the future Ireland 10 after the World Cup, say? I need to do more than just my job. I That's, believe me, that won't be anywhere near his radar tomorrow. Uh, that's the Cork we, arrogance uh, coming out in Cullum there, Ronan. That's no, 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 it's, no, 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 it's just no, the mindset. It, it's an interesting question in the fact that, like, sports people, they live in the short term. If you if you kind of remove the five-day target from you, 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 you kind of 
like you, you you miss the boat you like that's exactly what they're excellent at is being really selfish and looking after their individual individual preparation to get the best out of them Saturday maybe Sunday morning it's a different conversation because we have a different set of evidence to I suppose dissect but for me he uh he needs to uh get flow into his team and he needs to um marshal them around the pitch and kick his goals and then uh, you can be sure his manager will be happy with him What's the um, general mood in France at the minute running? Obviously, the, uh, at home to Scotland on Sunday should be an absolute belter, but the stuff hasn't gone exactly maybe like they would have uh, would have hoped over the last few weeks. Uh, everybody assuming that it's uh, just give it time, it comes good? Yeah, it's, it's, I suppose it's the times we live in now and the fact that um, I mean, France were on a run of 14 games. Um, they've won defeat and there's plenty of, I suppose... Um, deep analysis of, of where it all went wrong in Dublin. So from basically being world leaders and favourites for the World Cup, it's now Ireland that are the best at everything in, in the press over here. So um, maybe I think um, what they may underestimate is probably a confident Scottish side this weekend. Um, never have I suppose we on this program or I will obviously Scotland will have it at first that they've won two Six Nations game in succession so um, their juices are flowing they're going to a fantastic uh, stadium on, on, on Sunday to play their game with Finn Russell obviously um, an inside mole on everything about French rugby so they have a few aces up their sleeves and um, France have a few injuries, a few suspensions, and um, a few players out of form for me, but uh, still remain um, incredibly, um, I suppose, uh, unpredictable in their capacity to entertain. Mm. Your uh, I, your games are scheduled right in the middle of those games, which is a bit weird. You've breathed. Uh, tomorrow, I know you're not going to tell me that it's uh, money in the bank. Of course, they're bottom of the table, um, and you're back in the touchline and staying there. Yeah. I I haven't blinked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's the question? Yeah, the question exactly. That's, that was a question mark at the end of that. If I do, if I, was, well, I, I I'm staying. I'm staying on the touchline. I hope. To, yeah, that's that's the goal. You know, it's things went well uh, for you last week. They 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 relented a little bit. Um. Yes, they did, yeah. yeah. Well, sorry, I also wasted a day, a full day, uh, getting to Paris and going to a hearing. So, you know, that was quite painful, obviously, but the end result was good. But the deeper question is why, why are you uh, subjected to this hearing? But that's for another day. Um, yeah, so we had a good win and cast away. Um, and uh, obviously for people at home who don't follow it as much as you do, but the top 14 now... Um, it's. I think is it ahead of the Premiership in the fact that uh, since um, the start of this season in September, is it there's been four managers sacked in the middle of uh, in the middle of the season. Ronan, do you know what turns sixteen today? Who turns sixteen? Yeah, do you know what turns sixteen today? It's an anniversary. Um, no, go on. Ireland 43, England 13 at Croke Park, 2007, 24th of February. What are your memories of that unbelievable game? Why do you ask me the question on the 16th birthday? That's a bit odd, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's just the anniversary That's today, the, sir. We have you. Call him in one there, it's a bit odd. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, I was hoping it was a 15th or a 20th, but sure, we have you here. Yeah, it's exactly. the days. And if but I didn't then, ask you, I'd regret it. So. What I got, and that's the car queerness. He's trying to stand out now, Rona. That's easy. He I gets, do he, a Ross he's turn. got his shot here and he's because trying to stand Shane, out. Shane Hannon's just yeah. your job, Cullum. That's, Sexton's back yeah, in next time. Yeah. Joe was good during the week there with Liam Hayes, so now Cullum is on the That's right. I think it's a very legitimate question question like there was a seismic moment in sport and you played it sure was but sure I, there was so many of them you know but that was uh, incredibly special yeah mm. um it was um oh the feeling you know just standing there in crow park and and the anthems and then the english anthem and you wouldn't hear uh there mm. was complete and utter silence it was spectacularly good but that's so many days you know because you 
move on and you move on and you move away, you kind of sometimes, you can't stick, I hate looking back. I absolutely hate looking back. It's one, it's my big no. But um, when you see all the clips of it, it's it's particularly special, yeah, it's considering, um, you mean, the history associated with that ground as well, obviously. I was in the crowd that day and there was the concern during the English anthem was that some Egypt or somebody somewhere was going to do something or say something and in such a size of a crowd who knows what goes on people have a couple of pints in them whatever was that a uh, concern amongst the players were you thinking about it or talking about it or yeah because it was discussed I suppose during the week and um, I think we all had that apprehension and the fact that like if you have however um, was it 80,000 mm. people in the ground or was it I don't know you know 80, but yeah. Uh, it's a lot of people packed into a very small area, so if something uh, negative was to happen, it could be a potentially horrendous situation. So, I mean, that's the very, very uh, deep negative side of, of of your thoughts in game day. But, you uh, I mean, for the anthems, obviously, that was... Uh, people weren't too sure how they would kick off, but I think... Um, the respect shown and the silence shown just uh, brought the decibel level to unheard levels in Crow Park before before any sporting occasion I was involved in anyway, you know, just when you're kind of the referee kind of blows his whistle, okay, we can start and then the crowd just launch in behind you, you know, it was it was um, great times. Yeah, incredible. Ronan, thanks a million. Cheers, lads. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Great you to chat. Cheers, Thank thanks. Ronan, Aaron, the land there.